G'day, Birdman Pete with you to talk about the Tyrannus. I think the Tyrannus is a fabulous bit of gear at a really magical price, but if you try to set up something tricksy and you haven't had a lot of experience entering the program codes, oh dear, oh dear, it is quite a challenge. And I discovered that challenge when I wanted to put the mode functions in for a GPS waypoint flight with a quadcopter. This was a struggle. I went online looking for advice, didn't find exactly what I wanted, but I got a couple of good tips. And I have built those tips into a complete three-step program for setting up your Tyrannus to do six mode functions. And the sixth of those functions will be on a fail-safe switch. I think you're going to love this. You need a quiet room, a cup of coffee, and I will take you through button by button presses as we go to logical switches. This is page 10 in the Tyrannus menu. Let's go for it now. The two switches which I use for the first five steps of mode control are switch G and switch D. And switch G currently is in mode 1, now in mode 2, now in mode 3. Switch D hasn't swung into action yet, it's still giving us mode 3. One step downwards, it's mode 4. Another step downwards, mode 5. It's arguable that these two switches are too close together. Mode 6, which I sometimes refer to as the safety mode, is adjusted for me by this switch, which is a single throw switch. Currently, it's disengaged. When I th throw that forward, it overrides all the other modes and becomes either return to launch or auto tune. We're on the digital switches page, sometimes called custom switches, but this is page 10 out of 12 of the Tyrannus XD9. That is the program that we're going to build for you. Um, you might decide to use different switches. These, the options are wide open, but if you follow the logic of this, you won't have a problem. There are a number of safety features built into this which I've invested blood and tears in developing. Okay, we're going to start our build on line 11. And to get onto the page, at the moment we're only on the line number, we're now on the page with the enter key. Press the enter key again to activate it. Then we're going to press the plus key five times, seven times, beg pardon, to the word and. We're going to accept the word and. We're going to hop across to the next column and enter that to activate it. And here we're going to insert our first switch. And for me, it's switch G, but it's switch G in the up position. I flick the switch back again. It gives me the switch G in the up position. I accept that, hop across twice. And now we're going to enter, activating the cursor, we're enter, going to enter the second switch, which in my case is D, and we want it to be in the D up position, but it has to be the exclamation mark switch SD up. And now we're going to go down to the, find this mysterious exclamation. 20 presses of the button. Does that not seem excessive? Here we are. There is ISD up position. Note the exclamation mark before the S. I'm accepting that. Hopping across with the minus key to the right hand side of the page, activating the cursor, five presses of up gives us 0 0.5 seconds which is a mysterious delay. I don't know what it refers to. Now to get out of the line I press the minus key one more time it takes me to the far left hand side and the word and I press the exit key to take to line 11 number then the minus key to get us down to line 12, then the enter button to get us into the start of line 12. And you're ready to build your second line of the logical switches page for your mode functions. Okay, step two for the mode setup for a Tyrannus is not unlike the sequence which I showed you in logical switches. Now we're going to page six in the Tyrannus 12 step menu and this is the mixer page where almost everything good happens and here you are going to mix five lines of information into 
the channel which is ascribed for special functions and in my case that's channel 5 and it probably is for you as well but check your manual you'll soon find out this is the manual for your flight controller I'm talking about okay now I'm not going to go through this on a button by button press I think by the time you've got through logical switches you know the navigation program for entering the information let's just go straight to step two the mixer page a nice cup of coffee in a quiet room would be a blessing so here is the mixer page, page 6 out of 12, and as you can see we've got the ailerons uh, with two steps of dual rates, 60% and 35%. Then we've got channel 2, elevator, channel 3, throttle, channel 4, rudder, and then channel 5, which is being used for the mode functions. I'll scroll down so that you can see all of the six pages on channel 5 which are affecting modes. So here is channel 5, and we've got a weight of 66 for mode 1, a weight of 41 for mode 2, a mode, weight of 15 for mode 3, a weight of minus 10 for mode 4, and a weight of minus 36 for mode 5. Mode 6, which is return to launch or auto-tune in my case, has got 100% throw. So let's take a close look at line one of channel five. So I'm pressing enter and hold and accepting the edit. Here we are editing channel five page one and I've named it modes. You don't have to give it a name. It needs to be called L1 and you'll need to insert that and it then needs to be given a weight. I suggest you use these figures as a starting point. It won't work with all systems, but it'll be in the ballpark, shall we say. I'm not using any offset that saves a lot of messing around in my mind. Ignore trim, differential curves, modes, and then we get to the switch, and the switch in my case is SG, and for mode one, the arrow is pointing upwards. Now the last step in this is the multiplex and that has been set to replace. A lot of people use add in the multiplex setting but that is your choice. Now step three is slightly different. By the time you've got through your logical switches set up and your mixer page set up, you should be able to see this system working on the little screen that works on the Tarana screen which shows you switch movements. And once you're confident about that, it's time to get yourself to a nice big workshop. Nice and quiet, a cup of coffee would be again a great big help. But you're going to have to do this more or less on your own. You're going to need your computer. You're going to plug the flight controller into the computer so that you can read the output of the Tyrannus on your graphic user interface. And there you should see the modes switching through as you flick the switches. But they might not be perfectly spaced. And it could be that you've got to adjust the weights in your mixer program to get the trigger point happening right in the center of each of the five steps followed by the sixth step which is the fail safe. So it's time for you to follow this through in your own time, in your own workspace and I wish you the very best of luck. I'm pretty confident it's going to work for you. See you out in the flying field.